Welcome back, Chris here, Mad Rose Woodworks. Today, we're gonna build these. Stay tuned. We will be assembling all the legs. I have two, four, six, eight cut up at 30 inches for the corner legs. There's four corner legs which will be nailed and screwed. Put some brads in here to hold everything together until I can get inch and a quarter screws. We'll be pre-drilled. Three screws inch and a quarter just to hold everything together and the pre-drilling keeps these from splitting and I will put together four of those for each planter all right, next step is to take one of the previous pieces with this bottom rail and another board. And I like to flip the dog ear portion to the opposite side just to alternate it a little bit. And then we take two of our legs that we assembled earlier and I just like to make sure that these sides match up as far as where the boards were screwed together it doesn't really matter from it's just an aesthetic thing make sure the edge is flush on this corner piece here on both ends Same thing on this side, and this will be one long edge on our garden planter here. And what I do, just really quick, is I just take my square, speed square, and just make sure I'm My legs are squared to the bottom. Real close works great here. Doesn't have to be perfect within a sixteenth or so is ideal. And again, just make sure everything's flush and we start screwing things down. We put four screws for each board. Top and bottom. Try not to get too close to the ends because they will split. And if they split, it's not the end of the world. Make sure we're really, really close. And then uh, we'll get this guy screwed down because these pickets tend to be a little out of whack. Nothing's perfect down because they are cedar for fences. And I like to draw these edges tight. Again, just for looks. Because when these are put together and finished, they will be filled with either plastic with obviously perforations in the bottom or landscaping fabric of some sort underneath. So then we take one of our side legs here, and what I like to do is get a quick measurement. These are six foot pickets, so I just find three feet, mark the center, like so. 
and just eyeball it. And again, if you're off a half inch either way, no one's going to see it. And it's not critical to the assembly of the planter. And I like to double check these legs. Just make sure everything is square as can be and flush on the top of the box. And again, if you're not 100% accurate, close is good enough with these because they're typically sitting in a lawn, in the dirt, in an unlevel yard anyway. So even if they were perfect, odds are good there would be a little leveling that would be required for yourself or the end user. But that is it. That is one side. The next step is the two foot side pieces. Two on either side, just like the long sides. Make sure our edge is flush here. And just a quick check with the square. Make sure we are square with the legs. And then screw them into place. Again, four screws for each board, one inch. So they will not go through our five inch material. Put the other one. And you shouldn't have to do it as long as you're tight. But I still like to give it a little, a little check and make a slight adjustment because the square, the better. So we will get both of our sides on. Or magnetic. All right, we get this side on. Repeat the same thing over here. This will be one of the bottom pieces. See, now this one, this one's got a good split in it. I will use this as a bottom on here because that won't matter on the bottom. Because it's just the end that split. I have two pieces here that I don't pick, typically pick through the pile. I just grab what well, looks like the freshest bunch out of the pile because otherwise you'll be there all day if you try to get perfect, perfect planks. They don't need to be perfect, they just need to be close because it's a rustic planter box and you're not going to need perfection because over the years it, the cedar is going to weather and things will split a little bit and crack and do some weird things as it ages so don't get hung up and perfection because they don't need to be but once they're all together they look good the little don't sweat the little details you know it just taken me a long time to get over that I've always been a perfectionist and there are times obviously when you need to sweat the details but when you're working with outdoor furniture like this you know, when I did my deck, built outdoor furniture, I made sure to do it right. Don't get me wrong, it's not an excuse to take shortcuts and do things half-ass. But, don't 
get hung up on the details because you'll make yourself crazy. All right, that is done. Next, we get the other half. And there we go. Now this one, square, should get you pretty close. So we should be pretty close here. Just double check it. Yep. So what I will do, I'll just make sure my top is flush and really close to perfect. And screw everything together. Same thing, get this side. Good and square. And if you want, we can double check. Look at that. And it should be easy to get there without much drama. You just have to make sure when you make all your cuts, they're all square cuts and that'll help with assembly. If you're cutting things crooked, you're gonna make life difficult when it comes time for assembly. So if you're cutting with a circular saw, you know, use a speed square to kind of give yourself an edge. That's why I recommend a miter saw, because you can, I mean, for years, I had used a cheap Delta that I bought on sale, I think at Home Depot for like, I don't know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks maybe. I didn't pay a lot for it. And I literally got almost 20 years out of that saw. That was before I, mean, I bought the Ryobi this year. You know, I spent, what, two and a quarter on that one. Fair amount of money, but I'm at the point where I really need something not that it is any that much better than my $50 Delta. That Delta did me well. I made a lot of things with that over the years. All right, with that all assembled, here's your frame. Now what we do, the fun part. Now this part requires, this is going to be, uh, we're gonna get I believe 13 boards will fill this space here. So I'm going to get my 13 boards, including that one that's all split, because that's going to go on the side here where there won't be, where there's a little more support. And again, it, it's that split in that wood, it's, it's more cosmetic than anything because where I'm going to screw it, there's no split, it's just on the very edge. And again, if, if you sit here and nitpick about all your material with something like this, with, with it's going to make you crazy. It, that's the nice thing about these. Once I, once I burn the finish, the Shosugiban, Shosugiban, Shosugiban finish, it, uh, it looks nice. They look really nice. I, I like these a lot. I still have yet to keep one because they keep selling. I'll eventually have one in front of the house, I think. I'd like to plant some flowers. And the nice thing about these is you don't have to actually fill them with dirt and plant them. You, you could just put uh, f pots in here, flower pots, hanging baskets, and take the hangers off of them. You could, uh, you could put other just cheap plastic planters in here. But once they, they grow out, you can't tell really from uh, from the sidewalk, from the curb, wherever you have them sitting, from your, your your deck, your porch. You know, you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. And these are scalable. You can make them any size you need. I just do this size because this seems to be what, what people are looking for right now. Because for a garden bed, it's a good size. You know, you can grow definitely tomatoes, strawberries would be a good one. And it keeps the rabbits out. Doesn't keep the squirrels out. Squirrels are still an issue, but I've found that our neighborhood rabbits are more of a, a hindrance to our, our fruit. 
Uh, apple trees are an exception, and squirrels do get into the apple trees once in a while. But I do have chicken wire around those to slow them down. But once in a while, and the birds still get to them. But what are you going to do? All right, let me, uh, still got a pocket full of screws here. Let me get my, my boards. I over here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Maybe 12 was the magic number. Yeah, looks like 12 is going to fit here, not 13. So, what we do is you want to place them in here with just a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap. And when I nail this in, I won't even be able to tell. So. You give them a quarter inch, half inch gap. If some are a little, little wider, a little narrower, it's not a big deal because you will be putting, if you're filling this with soil, you will be doing landscaping fabric. Or possibly, you could use plastic. You just have to make sure you have adequate drainage in here. You don't want this to fill with water because that would be bad. Yeah, so quarter inch, half inch, three eighths, just eyeball it. Fairly evenly spaced in this, with this close. Close is good. All right, so now that I've got the tops kind of laid in here on an angle, what I want to do is I'll just shoot nails Because I learned a trick here is you get the nails in the top. Now, when you push the bottom in, some of the boards will be snug, but a lot of them will be loose. So they're not falling out on you while you're trying to assemble everything. And again, obviously, you don't need an air nailer to do this, it just makes life easier. And it's if you're batching out a bunch of these, it makes things quicker so you're not farting around struggling because, again, time is money. No matter what you're doing, your time is valuable. We all have only so much time in a day. And when you're doing this as a hobby or part-time with a full-time job, you don't want to be wasting time. All right, so once that's done, now what I'll, I'll do is I'll go through and I'll just drive a screw, single screw in each board just to give it a little extra, extra support, a little extra fastening strength just to help hold things together better. So even if these nails do rust out eventually, which of course they will eventually rust, you have the deck screws to help still hold things together. It gives it a little extra support. Is it needed? I, I don't know. It, it seems to work. It's been recommended to me and it seems to work for me. So just a single screw just to help hold things together. And what we're going to do, oh, that one, that. Every now and then, ah, that, that missed. There you go. And they, they'll split a little bit. You know, you'll get a dry board. A little crack. But not the end of the world. It, it's not all of them will. But between the nails and the screws, it gives you a lot of structure here. Yeah, and I, and I think it takes longer to cut everything out that it does to assemble. 
like that if you're making two, three, four of these. The nice thing is it takes roughly 15 boards for each box. Four of the pieces will not be cut, these four sides. You do have to rip, and you don't even have to rip the, this bottom ledger board that I'm screwing these into. You could buy one by furring strips, which are already like one by two, one by inch and a half. Well, it's not one by, it's what, three quarters. So that is also an option if you don't have the ability to rip, rip these boards lengthwise. But that's, I mean, you get, they're fairly solid. Once they're sitting on the ground, they're really solid. I mean, you get a little bit of flex in here, but it is a 5 8 fence picket. So let's get this, let's get this dude on the ground, and I'll show you the finished product. All right, there you go. As you can see, here's the finished project. Got both of them built, ready to go. Uh, ready for finish. Finish will be done with the torch. My roofing torch here, this guy, and a 35 pound tank of propane. Fun stuff. That we'll get into in another day. But uh, yeah, that, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to follow and subscribe. We'll have some more content, more videos coming your way as I build more projects. And hopefully, this will be one of the next ones. Is this guy. This guy's a lot of fun. It's the, the best part, almost as good as finishing the cutting boards with oil. Get the burn stuff. All right, thanks again. Be sure to follow and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. See ya.